Over my many years being a fan of the Serious Sam series, I put it upon myself to play each and every one of the entries. There was one game I couldn't get my hands on though, which was the port of the first encounter for the Palm OS. For years, forum members had tried to get some sort of visual representation, but all we had were a couple screenshots and an unboxing video. If you're like me, you've permanently got one by Ratatat stuck in your head. Nobody knew how the game actually played, and some speculated you wouldn't be able to physically move around like you would in the PC game and would be transported room to room, like many light gun games from the arcades. After many lost attempts to get the game working on emulation software, people eventually gave up and more years would pass until I happened to stumble across Femme on the Android, ironically being the best emulator for the Palm software, yet there's no sight of it on the PC. One might think the story ends there. Alas, there was one element that we still had no clue on. The sound. What did the game sound like? There was a clear menu option for it, yet none of the emulation methods actually played any sort of sound when playing the game. To my own frustration, I ended up purchasing a Palm OS Online, the M515. When it did arrive, I found myself enjoying the portable device a lot more than I had considered, alas the true purpose was to finally learn all the secrets that Serious Sam on the Palm OS had to offer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how Serious Sam sounds on the Palm OS. Many fans of Serious Sam consider Serious Sam Advanced to be the worst game in the series, but the Palm OS port of the first encounter may change your mind. Your first impression upon playing it would likely be that the controls just aren't comfortable, though considering what the developers were left with, I have to admit there weren't many options to begin with. You press the far left button to turn left, the button next to that to turn right, up and down to move up and down, the far right button is held when moving left or right to strafe, and the button next to that is to fire your weapon. To change weapons, you just tap the screen in this little rectangular box known as the graffiti pad. You'll start the game with your Colt weapon and move into that Shepset, the same location you'd start at in the PC counterpart. The game has all the levels from the original game, as well as the secret levels, which by the way require no special unlocking method and play in their original order. However, the levels won't always look familiar, as they're completely different from the original besides textures. A part of me thinks it would have been extremely charming to see it replicate the exact layout of the PC game, but perhaps that's asking too much? Serious Sam is known for vast open environments which the Palm OS just isn't capable of bringing. As such, you'll find yourself running through tight corridors and smaller rooms where you'll shoot familiar monsters from the PC game. Not all of them, but a good variety of the enemies were turned into sprites which will attack you upon being spotted. You can shoot in their direction and you'll usually land the shot, but when it comes to collision with the enemy, you'll find that you can pretty much walk through them unless you want to run directly into the middle few pixels of the sprite. That's all well and fine until you realize that this will be the case for every entity in the game, including pickups. They will be incredibly hard to nab, and in a tight scenario you'll have to suffer slowly maneuver into them whilst many other enemies could be hunting your tail. The movement in the game is also quite jittery. I've seen worse, but this is among the bottom of the barrel. Turning with a gentle tap of the button will send you off in 7 pixels in a direction. That's far too tight for picking up items in specific 3 pixel attributes. That will almost always be the case as ammunition is incredibly scarce. You could shoot down all your enemies with the Colt, it usually isn't a huge task to do so, but why would you want to? There are 6 weapons in the game and to typically restrict yourself to just one? Kinda sucks. The weapons themselves are few and far between, some levels having no weapons at all, and considering each time you die you're sent back to the beginning of the level with just your Colt, you'll end up being forced to use the Colt more than you'd like, which, well, sucks. Why would they take your weapons away for restarting a level? That's never been the case in any Serious Sam game. Doesn't help that the Colt is the most boring weapon in the game, also why just one Colt? They couldn't give you two Colts? Does anyone run around in the first encounter with just one Colt? That's pretty obsolete once you pick up the second one. Would have made the game a lot more balanced that way considering the ammo for the Colt is unlimited. Why you ask would it balance the game? Well, because it's just nonsensically difficult. Tourist difficulty. You know the one. Where you run around without a care in the world, being virtually indestructible. Yeah, well guess what? It's hard. A single hit from a clear will knock you back almost 30 health, and considering you can get spammed by these guys makes it incredibly easy to die. Also, they bleed for some reason? Bleeding bones. Did they not think about that? The clears aren't the only enemies you'll find this occurring with. Any enemy in the game can knock you out with just two or three hits. It's ridiculous. Your health does go up as you idle, but in less than one increment per second. If you're really low on health, enjoy sitting around for over a minute while it regenerates. You could just go find some health, but I should probably mention, along with ammunition, it's quite scarce. I can't even imagine playing on normal or serious. Serious Sam Advance had this problem too. What's up with the Serious Sam portables and unfair tourist mode? Maybe just call it easy or anything other than tourist because that implies something that it just isn't. 
You won't enjoy restarting a level for many reasons, so you lose your weapons, there's no checkpoint. I should probably make note of how maze-like the game can be at times as well. There's corridors that lead to literally nothing, and areas that direct you back in a circle, having the actual rest of the path somewhere entirely irrelevant to the flow of the layout. You won't want to have to run through these a second time. The level design is seriously quite bad at times. Now, admittedly, it has some entertaining moments, but about half of the game is spent running around looking for the next correct path. This isn't what a serious Sam player wants to see. Some of the levels are awfully dark as well, and I guess compliments where it's due. The enemies and weapons all form into the lighting environments, which is kinda neat regarding the hardware, but this only makes tedious levels level design even more difficult to navigate through. I really think they should have focused on making less levels with better quality. They didn't need to make a level for each level on the PC, just make your levels better in a fewer quantity. Then again, the game is quite often so laggy during the better moments that you'd have to be really patient to enjoy them anyways. There are a number of secrets to be found in the game, which like Serious Sam Advance, are found by hugging walls with no distinction to finding them. In the last level of the game, you're literally relied on to find one yourself to finish the level, and the game doesn't even inform you of this until you've been running around the level endlessly and then access accidentally stumble upon it, if you ever manage to do so. You'll be stumbling across the occasional lifeless gnar, however, that's pretty cool, right? I should mention the game's idea of floors, which are subsections of the level you'll come across. They just exist to clear the memory and reduce the lag, eliminating all the previous subsections and loading this new one. My biggest question here is, why couldn't these subsections act as a checkpoint rather than having to restart from the very first subsection? Not every level will have a subsection, though. Usually, these levels are very simple. The Dunes level can be beaten by just walking forward and slightly turning once, I'm not even kidding. You'll probably notice the screen tearing and flickering graphics, which is another problem with the game, but honestly, I'm not really going to nag on that too much because it is the palm we're talking about here. Besides that, it doesn't really give hindrance to the game other than a break of immersion, but are you ever going to actually be immersed here anyways? Though the presentation can be pretty okay at times. I didn't expect the wound animations for enemies to be present in the game, though they really are, so in that case, you can shoot a kamikaze once with your colt to gather some distance. Although kamikazes make no noise whatsoever, so just hope you have a keen eye. There's no explosive radius for them either, and you'll only suffer if one runs right into you, so that threat is pretty much the same as any other threat in the game. Something you'd never expect from the notorious kamikaze. These arachnids, though, are almost as much of a pain here as they are in the PC game, as they're hit-scan based, although they don't actually move around. They'd rather just stand in place. If you had died recently, though, you're gonna be put up against one of these with just your colt, so good luck. To better your chances, there are armor pickups which really just act as a secondary health bar. You won't lose any of your health until you've run out of armor. In an earlier screenshot for the game, you can see a rocket launcher placed on the right side of the screen, as is the case with most of the weapons in the game. Then as you collect the last two weapons, you'll see that they're placed in the middle, which looks a lot better and of course is unique, as they're not just sprite rips from gameplay. These were clearly repositioned in the editor, then brought into the game. I think the reason is because these two weapons have visible projectiles and they might not have been able to easily display making distance from the right side of the screen. But why didn't they just make all the weapons look like this? It looks a lot better than those tiny right-handed weapons on the bottom right. Was this a deal of time constraint or what? Why have two different placements? Natrissa makes a return in this one, and unlike Serious Sam Advance, you can activate it at any point in the game, which is a welcomed addition. Reading Natrissa is actually more entertaining than the game itself though, which might speak a bit to the game's fun factor. All the scripts are transferred right from the PC version, so if you want to up your Serious Sam know-how on the go, I guess this is one possible way to go about it. You might want to consider Elsewise though, as Serious Sam uses up more of your Palm's power than any other game I've played on it. You can get maybe an hour of Serious Sam gameplay on the Palm's power supply, and given how much the Palm is used as a device to keep your work and documents handy, I'm not so certain you'd be wanting to use your power for this. It also takes up 2 megabytes of storage on the Palm itself, which is a pretty big fraction of the internal 15 megabytes. Now I have to admit, the game doesn't do everything wrong, there's some clear effort here and there. There's some wall textures, that have some alternating graphics like torches and sewer pipes, they bring a more immersive effect to the game despite how limited they are, and it's still a nice touch one can't deny. The field of view is oddly large for a game of this resolution, and I think that fits well with the Serious Sam formula. Also, there are some nice skyboxes in the game which are quite appealing to look at and makes the whole visual presentation a lot more, well, presentable. But that's where the positives end. Now, I wouldn't be able to call this a review of the game without talking about the death system, which works with points. As you collect points throughout the game, you'll end with either a good high score or a few number of points knowing you made it through the entirety of the game. If you die and you don't spend the required points to continue, you'll be put back at the main menu, and believe me, you're going to be dying several times. You can then select a custom level and start off where you finished, right? Nope, if you want to progress through the game, you need to start from the very first level. Once you've unlocked all the levels traditionally, you can visit any of them you want, but if you decide to go into a custom level and expect to continue the game like that, you won't be able to as it puts you back at the main menu once you finish. So not only will you go into these later levels with just your cult, but you can't even continue past the level you've selected. For that, you'll always need to start a new game, and this is just stupid. The high score is also seen as a sacrifice in-game. Oh no, now you won't get a good high score. Well, actually, other than your own self-satisfaction or to compare with a friend or whatever, the high score means jack shit. 
so my suggestion is to just ignore the score and keep going. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy having to go back to level 1. Now, you might have noticed I'm playing this over top the Palm keyboard accessory, but it doesn't actually utilize it. You can put in your name for the high score selection at the end, but that's it. This probably would have made the game a lot more playable if you could use the Palm keyboard. I even held the command keys for button prompts, but none of them could recognize the game. It's not like this was ever a feature for Palm games, though. Only one I've ever managed to get it to work with was a Galaxian clone. Out of curiosity, I tried the included black and white version of the game, and oh boy, look at that, the frame rate improves significantly. I guess this makes sense since it was also trying to render the bitmap colors, and the old Palm couldn't take too much of those revolutionary graphics. So yeah, if you have an older Palm or just want to play the game faster, there's an option. Trying out Serious Sam on the Palm OS was a fun little project for me, but other than being a cool concept and a neat piece of history for the series, the Palm OS port is a serious waste of time. <laughs>